morning. Good morning. I want to remind you that you are beloved children of God. But today I also want to talk about water. The water of baptism and the water of life. Now, I don't know about all of you, but water has always been important to me. I would much rather be on a beach where there's water or on a lake where there's water or by a river than, let's say, be in a mountain or a desert. I, as Edna St. Vincent Millay wrote in a poem once, I have a need for water near. I certainly prefer water and snorkeling to mountain climbing or rappelling. Never done it, not planning to. <laughs> in fact, as many of you know, my favorite places are the coast of Maine and the coast of Maui. Now, while I don't usually swim in, swim in Maine because the water is literally <laughs> freezing even in the middle of the summer, I do love to snorkel in Hawaii. And I have to tell you, there is nothing like swimming when a sea turtle floats by or hearing the sound of a whale singing as you're snorkeling. The ancient Greeks believed that there were four elements that, were, that everything was made up of, earth, water, air, and fire. This theory goes back to 450 BC. And while things have progressed, modern science believes that the four elements align with the four states of matter, earth, which is solid, water, liquid, air, gas, and fire, plasma. We, you and I, are all made, and everything is made of earth, fire, water, and air. Electrical impulses go through our bodies and stimulate our muscles and fire our neurons. Our bodies are carbon-based, and they're built from the same building blocks as stones and soil. And in a few weeks, we will be reminded that we are dust. And to dust we shall return what makes up the earth. Did you know that we can only go three minutes without air and that 60% of our body weight is water? There is no exaggeration to say that we are the wisdom of the four elements as we walk around, as we talk, as we hug, as we build skyscrapers, go to work every day, give birth, and go about our daily lives. We are the wisdom of elements, thinking, feeling, loving, experiencing, learning, questioning, and exploring. And the wisdom gleaned from natural elements of fire, earth, water, and air is the foundation of healing practices of Native Americans, Chinese, and Tibetan cultures. And the sacrament of baptism that we celebrate today includes these natural elements of water and fire. Water with the water of baptism and oil or the fire of the Holy Spirit, which the newly baptized are cleansed with and sealed with as Christ's own forever. In a few moments, we will pray over the water, calling to mind the importance of water in creation, in the saving of the people of God and adopting people into the household of God. In fact, hear these words from the Book of Common Prayer. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led your children out of Israel, out of their bondage in Egypt, into the land of promise. In it, Jesus, your Son, was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, water, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Water is foundational to our life as people of God, as people who are baptized into the household of God. And the psalmist in Psalm 21 tells us, The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. Now water has the propensity and capacity to heal, but it also has the capacity to destroy. It is both and. New life comes from water and life is taken away because of water. All we have to do is look at what happens when there are hurricanes and floods. 
when people's homes and communities are destroyed because of too much water. But God's sovereignty is in the water. God's sovereignty refreshes and renews, even as water has the potential to do damage. So as people of water, people who are baptized through the waters of baptism, all people should respect water. It is a precious resource. And did you know that 771 million people, 771 million people lack access to water? Not just good water, but water at all. And 1.7 billion people lack access to improved sanitation. And 1 million people die each year from water-related diseases. Several years ago when I was in seminary, I had the opportunity to travel to South Africa. And I lived with the HIV AIDS coordinator in the Diocese of Christ the King, which is just south of Johannesburg. And we traveled around to some of the villages and areas where she had clients to see them and talk to them about how they were doing. And I was amazed to see grandmothers carrying, hauling on their backs, strapped on their backs, these giant plastic containers filled with water from the local, well, it wasn't really local, from the well, miles back to their hometowns. And occasionally there was a village, a village made of tin and cardboard homes that had a public water source. It was like a long pipe that had several faucets on the top of it where people could come and fill up their buckets and take the water back to their homes. There was no public sanitation or toilets or water in the homes. This all had to be brought in. It was eye-opening to me, someone who's always had the convenience of turning on a faucet and having water right there at my fingertips, ability to flush a toilet. People don't always have the things that we take for granted. As I said, water is an element that has been incredibly important since the beginning of creation. It features prominently in the people of God and in our journeys as people who have been baptized into the household of God. Water is necessary for life, and water brings forth new life. For some of us, water is where we find peace, and the mystery of water in the oceans and rivers and lakes where sea life thrives. Water can also, as I said, be destructive through flooding and hurricanes, tsunamis and riptides. Millions of people die and are killed by water. But in a few minutes, we will be sprinkled by water that has been blessed for baptism. And I hope that in that sprinkling, I promise I won't drown you, even though I told you last week to bring rain hats. But in that sprinkling, may we be reminded of the power of water to heal, to free us as people of God, as adopted into the household of God, and also as a resource that is precious and that we need to help bring to people around the world. There is a power in water as there is in air and land and wind that connects us to all life. May we find that connection this day and help to live into our baptismal covenant of helping to bring justice and peace to those who are different than us, to respect the dignity of every human being, and to most of all, to love our neighbor as ourself and to be reminded that all of us are beloved children of God. Amen.